dynamic routes in Next.js. What are they? How do they work? And then we're also going to show you an example of how to implement dynamic routes here. So first off, what, what are dynamic routes? Well, these are for when you don't know the exact segment names ahead of time, or you don't know the exact route ahead of time, and you want to create these routes from dynamic data. So for example, in this application here, and I know it looks pretty dang gross here, but this is just fetching some mock data here from jsonplaceholder.com. So it's just returning a list of titles. And these are representative of like different blog posts. So the idea here is that we have this list of different blog posts, and then we would want to click on one of these titles, and then it would navigate us to a post. However, like we don't we don't know necessarily like what post ID that they want to navigate to. So do they want to navigate to post forward slash one, post forward slash three, post forward slash four, so on and so forth. So if I click on this, you're going to see I navigated to post forward slash six because all we're doing in this Next.js app is I'm getting these posts from JSON placeholder and I would definitely recommend doing some error handling here, but I'm not for the sake of this example. But we get the posts, we map over those, and then we render a link to that post at forward slash post forward slash some dynamic ID. So we need to create dynamic routes that are going to match this dynamic ID for a given post. Because, you know, we don't want to show them a not found page, of course. We want to be able to click on a post and then show them the page for that post. So in order to implement this functionality, like we don't want to create in our application, we don't want to have to create all these different routes, like a new folder, post forward slash one, post forward slash two, post forward slash three. That would be frankly ridiculous to do. We want to create dynamic routes. So how do we do this in Next.js? Well, it is pretty straightforward. If you haven't seen my like fundamentals vid video on routing in Next.js and you don't know how like basic routing works in Next.js, that would be good to kind of watch first, but I'm going to assume a certain level of knowledge there. So the way that this works is, and we'll come back to the docs here quick, and I will have my project linked in the description below as well as this page in the docs. All we need to do is create a route that has square brackets around it. So a dynamic segment can be created by wrapping a folder's name in square brackets. For example, square brackets ID, square brackets slug, so on and so forth. Dynamic segments are passed as the params prop to layout, page, route, and generate metadata functions. So for example, if you create a route that is blog forward slash square bracket slug square bracket, and you have a page.js file in that, and we're looking at that page.js, well, you can get this dynamic value here using the params object passed as a prop to your page. So this is their page that is sitting in the folder that's titled square bracket slug square bracket. So if someone goes to blog forward slash A or blog forward slash B, then this params object here, the value of it at dot slug, and this is important as well, the name that's within square brackets is going to match the name of the property on the params object that you're going to be able to access to get the value that they're at right here. So this is going to be some dynamic value within square brackets, and you're going to access it using the property on the params object that matches the name that you put within the square brackets. So if they go to blog forward slash a params dot slug is going to equal a, and they're showing this here. If you go to blog forward slash a, the slug is going to be a on params dot slug. And then if they, they go to forward slash blog forward slash B, well, the value of params dot slug is going to be B. And then you can use that information 
to show the correct blog post. So let's go ahead and implement this. If we come back to VS Code here, I have my post page. So I need to create a dynamic route at posts forward slash and then some ID. So here within our post folder, we're going to create a new folder and I'm going to do left square bracket ID right square bracket. So now we have created a, a dynamic route here and then I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to be page.jsx and then I'm just going to export a default function called post. Now, as we just looked at in the docs, since this is a dynamic segment, we're going to be passed a params object that is going to be on our props or passed as a prop to this post component. And then we are going to return, well, we are going to return just some information regarding a post. So what this is going to be is I'm just going to do a div and then an h1. And eventually it's going to have the title of our post. And then I'm going to do a p tag that's going to have the body of our post. But we first need to get our post dynamically. So let's for now just say post title, and then I'll say post body. And then all we'll do for now is let's console.log the params object. So if I go to posts forward slash one, forward slash two, we should see different values console log here. So let's start with that. So I have everything running here. And then if we come back and I click on a post, you see, I see post title and post body. Nothing fails here. I click on a different one, post title, post body, and a different one. And now let's check our console. We can see that on this params object, it has an ID property of the value of six and of the value of 13 and of the value of 20, because that is matching the post ID that we have, we were navigating to. So now with that, we can say const ID is equal to params dot ID, or maybe even better is we can destructure ID from the params object. And now we should have the ID of our post. So with that ID, we can now make a request to our JSON placeholder API to actually get the desired post. So what I can do now is I can say const res is equal to, and let's make this an async function here. So const res is equal to await fetch, and then the URL is going to be HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash json placeholder dot type code dot com forward slash posts forward slash and then i need to do dollar sign curly brace and then the id but of course this needs to be in backticks here so it's actually a template string and we pass the dynamic id and then we need to say const post is equal to wait res.json. And now that we have our post here, we can render, and you can look at the API for this, but it's going to be post.title as well as post.body for the title and body of the post. And then I'm just going to add a few styles here to make this look a little less gross. I'm going to copy and paste them from just a demo project I did earlier, but I'm going to put those in there. You can, of course, if you're following along, you can copy and paste from my GitHub repo. Now I'm going to delete this console log and now let's head back to our application. And already you see at post four slash 20, it looks like we see an ID as well as the post body. And if we go to a different one, we see a new title, a new body, another different one, a new title, a new body. So it looks like we are correctly implementing dynamic segments here. Now, before you go, a couple of other things to know about. So you can optimize this a little bit by using the 
generate static params function. You can do this to build routes at build time instead of on demand at request time, which might help your performance a little bit. It mentions the primary benefit of generate static params is a smart retrieval of data. If content is fetched with the generate static params function, using a fetch request, the requests are automatically memoized. This means a fetch request with the same arguments across multiple generate static params, layouts, and pages will only be made once, which will decrease build times. So this is a performance optimization you can do. I've covered this in previous videos, but if you would like to see like just a specific video on this, let me know and I'm happy to cover that. Now, one more thing I wanted to touch on here is catch all routes. So what if you wanted to do something like this? So it mentions that dynamic segments can be extended to catch all subsequent segments by adding an ellipsis inside the brackets. For example, at forward slash shop forward slash square bracket dot 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 slug will match forward slash shop forward slash close, but it will also match forward slash shop forward slash close forward slash tops. And it'll match all these as well. So what, what does this kind of look like? So for example, we have our posts here, forward slash 22. But what if, what if we also wanted to see a different post on this page or something? Well, if I go to now, if I add forward slash 22, forward slash 2, what happens? Well, this page cannot be found, which isn't what we wanted here. So let's come back. And let's make this a catch-all route. So instead of just ID, let's rename this to dot, 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 ID. So we've now made this a catch-all route. And now let's come back and we see we, we don't have any data here. So we're not getting a 404, so we are matching this route, but we're also not getting any posts. And that is because, let me, instead of doing this here. Well, we can keep doing that, but I'll just console.log our params now. And if I hit the return statement a little bit here, what you're going to see is that now we have params, but our ID param, it's now in array of 22 and 2. So this catch-all route, it's now instead of setting the ID as just 22, it's an array of 22 and 2. And if we add 3 here, it's going to be an array of 22, 2, and 3. So if we wanted to show all these posts on the same page, well, then we could, instead of this logic here, we could do const posts is equal to await. And then we can use promise.all, our ID is going to be an array, so we can do id.map, and then we can do async ID, and then we can say const res is equal to await, and then this is going to be our fetch request based on our post. So right there, it's going to be the same fetch request we had earlier, and then we can just return await res.json. And then instead of just rendering this, we can render JavaScript land. I'm going to say post.map. I'm going to accept a post. And then we can return. I'm going to cut and paste this in here. And I know this doesn't look great. And I'm also going to wrap this in a React fragment here. And that should do what I want here. So let me come back and we do see all of our posts here. And if we add another post here, you see it's just kind of appended to the bottom of this page. So we're doing just this big kind of catch all route here to see all these posts on the same page because now our params, well, our ID is going to point to an array of different values. We're getting all the posts using promise.all and then just mapping over those posts. 
So that is how you can implement dynamic segments as well as catch-all segments within Next.js.